folks. This is uh, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, drug reactions in the skin. Many times when we see people with uh, skin allergies or some kind of uh, skin reactions, we forget about drugs. We think about everything except drugs. So let us see a few things about it. Let us say a 20-year-old college student came to you and she said she is very fatigued and she has upper respiratory tract infection and she got this rash and uh, you ask her, okay, you got upper respiratory tract infection, you got sore throat, uh, did you go to the doctor? She said yes and she said the doctor prescribed me amoxicillin. You see, that's an important information right there. So she got this rash because she is taking amoxicillin. This morbilliform rash is typical of amoxicillin and it is very common if a patient has mononucleosis. So you stop at amoxicillin and you give some Benadryl for reaching and she got better. You see, how the information like that helps. Cutaneous drug reactions are very common and we see that uh, very commonly even like three to four percent of people who come to you get this problem. In fact one study showed that 40 percent of all adverse drug reactions were manifested in the skin. Maculopapular eruptions known as exanthematous drug eruptions they are the most frequent of all cutaneous drug reactions and they represent 95% of skin reactions. And many times we confuse them with viral exanthems. These occur most commonly with beta-lactams. As I said, amoxicillin, it's a beta-lactam. And with other uh, drugs also like barbiturates, gentamicin, isoniazide, phenytoin, sulfonamides, thiazides. And one thing is uh, Bactrim. Like back when I was in medical school, one day I got uh, some infection. I was taking Bactrim, trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, and I got rash all over my body. And I went to the dermatologist, and the dermatologist looked at me and said, are you taking any drugs? And I said, I'm taking Bactrim. And he said, your skin allergy, your skin reaction is due to that allergy from the Bactrim. So Bactrim is another culprit like that. I can relate to that personally. And there are articarial drug reactions. And they are the most common, second most common skin eruptions. They represent like 5% of cutaneous reactions. These reactions can result from any drug, but most commonly aspirin, penicillins, sulfur drugs, ACE inhibitors, aminoglycosides, and blood products. This articaria results from IgE reactions within minutes to hours of drug administration. And there is drug-induced hyperpigmentation. For example, antiarrhythmics like amiodarone, antibiotics like minocycline, NZs, chemotherapy agents like adriamycin. Warfarin-induced skin necrosis is another problem. This warfarin-induced skin necrosis, WISN, is a rare but serious side effect predominantly seen in obese persons and presents between three and six days of war foreign treatment. So WISN is a more common in those with thrombophilic abnormalities. When you give these large doses, they develop this problem. Then fixed drug eruptions. They occur with uh, phenophthalene, tetracycline, ibuprofen, sulfonamide antibiotics, barbiturates. So fixed drug eruptions are more commonly found in males. Then we need to think about erythema multiforme and Stevens-Janssen syndrome. And they can occur secondary to drug reactions. Incidence of Stevens-Janssen syndrome is estimated to be like 1 to 2 percent per 6 million. And uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome has 5% mortality, whereas toxic epidermal necrolysis has like 30% of mortality. Recently, one college student came and she was worrying so much about toxic epidermal necrolysis. 
she was fine otherwise and i reassured her she did not have toxic epidermal necrolysis because she is fine then she was happy and went home you see she read about that on online before coming to me so many times patients read through this online and they get very confused so then you need to see them and you need to reassure them because toxic epidermal necrolysis is it has its own manifestations then maculopapular eruptions maculopapular eruptions they are red macules with papules and they occur any time after a drug therapy and they last one to two weeks the reaction usually starts on the upper trunk and head and neck and uh, sometimes it sp spreads down to the limbs the eruptions may become confluent in a symmetric generalized distribution but it spares the face mild desquamation is normal as the exanthematous eruption resolves urticaria and angioedema reactions they present as circumscribed areas of blanching and erythema and edema of superficial dermis they may occur on any skin area and are usually transient migratory and prorytic and angioedema it represents a deeper reaction within swelling and it causes swelling around the lips and eyes so angioedema is something to remember then hyperpigmentation some drugs in this area amiodarone causes a dusky red coloration that turns blue gray with time in photo exposed areas then minocycline minocycline can cause a blue gray color in acne lesions on gingiva and the teeth then phenytoin and other hydantoins they cause melasma like brown pigmentation mostly on the face then there is bleomycin it can cause streaking hyperpigmentation on the trunk and extremities then there is adriamycin and this can cause hyperpigmentation on the face and the nails then i said warfarin induced skin necrosis it represents a sudden onset of painful localized skin lesion that is initially looks red and then hemorrhagic then it becomes bullous and uh, it culminates like a gangrene necrosis it develops more often in obese women in their 50s in areas with high subcutaneous fat like for example let's say breasts lot of fat thighs lot of fat buttocks lot of fat those are the areas this warfarin induced skin necrosis can happen then fixed or bullous drug eruption fde fde presents with single or multiple sharp demarcated circular violaceous edematous plaques that may include slant, central blister the lesions appear after drug exposure and reappear exactly at the same site each time the drug is taken the site resolves leaving the area of macular hyperpigmentation so lesions can occur anywhere including the hands and the feet but are found most commonly on the glands penis the eruption presents like 30 minutes to 8 hours after drug administration the bullous fdes occur with the lesion blisters and erupts i saw one patient with a desquamation and crusting then erythema multiforme it comes as a raised edematous papules distributed acrally most importantly there should be some type of epidermal disruption with bulla or erosions within target lesions severe erythema multiforme becomes more and more widespread epidermal detachment may occur involving less than 10% of uh, total body surface area stephen johnson syndrome it presents with erythematous or prorytic macules it widespread blisters will come on the trunk and the face and erosions of one or more of mucous membranes also happen epidermal detachment occurs and it involves less than 30% of total body surface area so toxic epidermal necrolysis it is one of the most severe side of uh, sjs spectrum 
EM is diagnosed when less than 10% of body surface area is involved, whereas uh, TEN, toxic epidermal necrolysis, is diagnosed when 30 to 40% uh, of skin is involved. Drugs most commonly known to cause SJS and TEN are sulfonamides, antibiotics, allopurinol, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, amine antileptic agents like phenytoin and carbogepine, lamotrigin. So, you see the drug reactions that manifest over our skin, they can happen from that wide range of area. So, every time you see a patient with a skin reaction, always ask what drugs are they taking, especially any new medications and many times that will give you the diagnostic clue why they have that problem. I hope this helps. Thank you very much.